Christine's closing, like I mentioned, we had two questions that were basically kind of general around, you know, what or where are the bills that you may have sponsored this session, where are they at now? Um, and then, you know, what were your priorities maybe that you wanted to touch upon? So just briefly, each of you can provide that. So I guess I'll start. I, I already spoke earlier about some of my priorities. I guess uh, one thing that I would touch on is yesterday I went and sat with a affordable housing coalition and I think all of us can recognize with, within this community this is something that's a big issue and that we, we need to address. I thought that Senator Dawson's bill on, on a land bank or doing whatever we can with TIF or tax increment financing, uh, whatever we can do uh, to, to create more affordable housing uh, would be great. And I think long term, I, I realize it's incredibly complicated and I know you're trying to unwind that ball, uh, but doing something of, given the fact that, you know, so, Difficult situations for border communities, especially for us, we're in a unique situation, going head to head with with a, a behemoth with Nebraska and Iowa. We, we've got to do something to address the the disparity uh, between the, the commercial property tax between uh, Nebraska and Iowa, and, and that's that's something that look, I've, I've not been able to do a lot, especially being on the minority, but representing Council Bluffs and in, in, in Carter Lake, it's something that we really, really need to put a lot of time and energy and focus on in this community is is affordable housing and addressing some of the lack of economic development in this community. Uh, since we're getting to ways and means season right now, some of those things are still a work in progress, but uh, two of the bills I'm probably most happy on is uh, one, with this guardianship and conservatorship bill that's been out there for about four years. Uh, I'm really happy with the, you know, that we were able to come together with the House and pass a bill. Uh, it's been the largest reform of guardianship and conservatorship laws in Iowa history. And it's really the, the poorest of the poor people that just, uh, not fighting financially, but just people in means that have no ability to protect themselves. Uh, a lot of people out here might have some experience, but people have no experience. Uh, but it's one of those things that on your uh, personal bills you've been working on after a four year endeavor, it's nice to finally see that across the finish line. As well, too, see, it's not always House or Senate. I have to give the House a lot of props here. Uh, we got the uh, live term as uh, we jokingly call Pipe Dreams 2.0 bill. Uh, that's our bill that uh, taxis uh, glass and metal crack pipes out there. Uh, you've heard me talk about it before. We got that passed a couple of weeks ago. And within that, as we said, we had tax, but it's actually to create uh, the, the first specialty court fund here in Iowa that is going to uh, fund you know, our drug courts and you know, additional courts like that. And the whole premise is that these people are going to make a profit off others' addictions. They should have to have some uh, skin in the game and actually helping support uh, a better system. So that's another thing. It's actually, we started that back in 2020, and that's when we finally got across the finish line, too. So two things I'm really happy about that we were able to get done. And uh, I just want to tell everyone happy Easter. Yes, happy Easter. I forgot about that. Um, you know, a, a couple of things. One of the things uh, will is still coming forth. I, I, I put a lot of emphasis on our parks and recreation and our trail system and so on. That's going to come through on in the uh, infrastructure bill. Uh, the last couple of years, we've put an additional $6 million each year into our parks and rec uh, for maintenance and, and uh, for improvements. And Lake Manilow, I've seen some of that. One of the things I want to see this year is continuing that funding of $6 million. I also want to use that as leverage to make the DNR uh, restore the uh, full-time park ranger at Lake Manawa because it's the most visited park in the state. So that's something that we need to look at. I think the educational funding this year uh, has been significant. As I said, when you put that teacher salary money in there, that's, that's a fundamental uh, win in terms of making sure that particularly our rural schools as well as our urban schools um, uh, are going to be able to maintain teachers. And so while the 2.5% SSA is lower than I want, I, I did do, because we, we hear a lot around here sometimes about, you know, uh, we need to spend more money here or there. And, uh, you know, the Republicans have a trifecta, so I did spend some time looking up. Uh, last time the, uh, the opposite party had the trifecta, which would have been in 2006 to 2010. And each year of those four years, uh, they did to have 4% SSA. And at the end of the four years, they instituted a 10% cut across the board for everybody, including every school district in the state. So when you average out those four years out, they average 1.5% SSA once you had the 10% cut. So it isn't always about how much money you spend, it's about how much money you spend in terms of making sure that it's reliable and that you can fulfill those obligations that you have. And then lastly, the mega sites bill, I think is pretty important too. I think it's important for Southwest Iowa. 
So I'm glad we're getting that through. And uh, happy Easter. It'll be the first time I have no kids at home. It's going to be weird. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. if you're having him. In my role as a joint leader, um, do I have my own personal priorities that I work on for constituents? Yes. Um, but in the role of the joint leader, like I have to look at the priorities of my entire caucus um, and respectfully for the uh, entire Iowa House. There are plenty of things that we've come together on this year, uh, both majority and minority, and I appreciate working with you at some Turk and all three of you gentlemen. Um, but there's been a lot of things that we've been able to accomplish in a bipartisan fashion, send it over to the Senate. There's too many of them to list with the time frame that we have right now. Um, I'm very proud that we got the future pay done. Um, that is a huge thing. Been hearing about that uh, from superintendents, especially in the rural parts of the state, that there is a genuine need to try and attract, retain um, good quality teachers within our education institutions. Uh, so that's a huge priority. Uh, there's plenty of, of the spending bills with budgets coming up, um, ways and means issues we're looking at, hopefully uh, being able to turn some of your taxpayer dollars back to you uh, because the state's got too much money right now. And I know a lot of people look at the money and they're like, well, we'll fund every program. Well, we can't fund everything at 100% all the time um, because if the economy dips on us and we don't have some kind of buffer left in the state budget, then like uh, Rosen Seagrass talked about, we don't want to get into a position where we have to go and do a 10% across the board cut. And prior to that, there had been a 1% across the board cut in that year. Uh, and I remember it distinctly. Uh, that was, those were my first four years in the Iowa House. Um, and I was in the minority. I was watching that stuff happen, going, what in the world is happening to our state? So, um, there's way too many priorities for me to list out all of them. Um, I, I'll say it this, cautiously. The best or worst is yet to come, one way or the other. <laughs> um, we're getting into, we released our budget targets uh, last Thursday. Uh, the Senate did the same. Um, and so we're in the process of, uh, process of negotiating those budgets, trying to finalize those pieces, finalize the tax bill. And there's a couple pieces of policy that are still out, still out there and lingering. Um, but I'm looking forward to hopefully getting done uh, within the next 14 days or so um, and getting, getting your work concluded. Because the longer we're down there in Des Moines, like we talked about previously, you've got 150 different personalities, 150 different egos, and 150 different people that all have their own unique ideas. That's not always good for the people of Iowa. Um, to have us there in session and all these ideas keep coming up and new proposals here and new proposals there. Uh, we have to weed through a lot of that stuff. I'm proud of the work that we've accomplished. Looking forward to passing a balanced budget, returning some of your taxpayer dollars back to you, but also funding the priorities that we've heard about here today and that I've heard about from my uh, local forums up in Logan, um, and then getting the job done and then getting back out to listening to you and working with you to make Iowa the best place to live, grow, and raise a family. Like the others have said, happy Easter. Be a good one.